This is Tom Colley for Free the Ropes Boxing. It's a pleasure to be joined again with Chris Lovejoy. Chris, how's things been? It's pretty good, man. You know, uh, I took a whole year off. I've been just chilling, working, you know, uh, probably gained a little bit of weight, but uh, I'm all good. You know, what's going on, man? Not a lot. It's been, it's been a few years since we last spoke, Chris. I think last time out, you were building up for the fight with Dave Allen or that had just sort of gone by. But um, before we go into that, I mean, I see you're out in Austria at the moment. Are you living over there, training over there? What's what's going on? I'm over in camp. I'm training. I'm actually uh, training. Uh, one of the guys that's in camp with us is uh, the guy who fought Cash Ali, his last fight. I so good sparring? Bogdan or Bo well, 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 I'm not in his camp. We're in camp together uh, sure. in someone else's camp. Good sparring, though. I got some rounds in with him today. Nice, nice. Did you did you get a chance to watch the Saudi card on the weekend, Chris? Big card over there. Yeah, I saw some of it. I saw some of it. Yeah. What did you make of the uh, the Anthony Joshua knockout with Francis and Garno? Um, I think it went as expected. Um, a lot of people was thinking that uh, because he went the distance with Tyson Fury that he would probably go to distance or make it a good fight with Joshua. It's just two different styles. You know, uh, Tyson is a more defensive fighter, you know, more skillful fighter. Uh, AJ, he'd probably be a little more aggressive, especially someone who doesn't have a boxing experience. And that's kind of how I caught it and thought it was going to be. And I was just like, nah, I, just because he went to distance with Fury doesn't mean he's going to do good against Joshua. I think Joshua get him out of there quick. And that's what happened. Uh, you know, open to the right hand, you know, Josh was a lot more faster, powerful than uh, Theory. You know, I mean, um, the guy no just didn't have a defense to stop it, you know, kind of just sitting there like a sitting duck, you know. What do you make of the whole crossover boxing? Do you think that following that and Garner as, as a future in boxing, do you think he should continue or um, and, and the whole crossover thing as a whole, what do you make of it? Uh, the crossover thing is cool. I mean, as long as, as, long as it's selling out, you know, uh, putting people in the seats, Everybody's making money, so it's always a good thing, you know. Uh, now, I do believe it takes away a little bit from the actual fighters, you know, the people who like actually, you know, risk their health, you know what I'm saying, and put a lot of time in, you know, over the years and don't get these big opportunities. So uh, that's the, the downside of it. But at the end of the day, you know, like I've always I told fighters and told people about fighters that you got to you got to market yourself more, you know, because as a promoter these days, you know, the network, it's all about the ticket sales, you know, the revenue, uh, the pay-per-view and all that. So if you can sell a fight, you can get a fight. Now, we last saw you out in March last year, Chris. So it's been a bit of an absence of the ring, about a year now. Where are you with your career? Are you looking to get back out soon? I know you mentioned you're back in camp now. Yeah, um, I'm not in my camp, uh, but I'm definitely looking, looking to get back back in the ring. Like I said, I took a whole year off. Um, I actually feel good. Uh, this was this was a life changer for me. I'm back in my boxing mode, uh, get, eating clean out here, actually working out twice a day, f uh, feeling good, getting some actual sparring in with some actual heavyweights. Uh, I got my boxing bug back. You know, last year I've been kind of just like, you know, hustling, making money, you know, trying mm -hmm. different business things like that in California and uh, making a decent living for myself. But uh, boxing is where I'm at. Uh, I still got a little gas in the tank. Um, I still don't really have no real damage in boxing. You know, so I still, I still want to go. And like I said, just coming here kind of made me really, really want to get back in the ring and have some fights. So I got some, I got a few potential fights coming up. Um, and that's usually, that's usually how it happens. You know what I'm saying? When you get in camp, when you get in the gym, opportunities come. You know, when people think you're not taking things serious and all that, and actually in the gym, you don't really get these opportunities. But I got a few fight opportunities, uh, actually, since I've been here the last couple of weeks. So, yeah, um, I probably think it'll give me like a quick little tune up. I'm supposed to be going to Rwanda uh, next month, April. To get one um and i think i believe one in kenya and i'll be like at 22 one and one which is still a good record you know yeah. i got one loss you know so i got one loss to mike Mutar, and that's it you know what i'm saying i got i just gotta just stay focused you know what i'm saying stay in the gym and give me a few fights and get me back on the board you know what I, mean? I can start pulling up talking some stuff the way i do you know any ideas of, of or anyone on the hit list for you, Chris? I know, like I mentioned at the start, I remember a few years ago you were due to fight Dave Allen. Been a bit of past needle with British fighters. Anyone that you sort of got your eyes set on once you've had a few uh, fights? Johnny Fish, Kevin Curse, Kevin Curse, you say? Kevin Curse on here? Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> Johnny Fish is a pussy, for real. He's a pussy. He's a bitch. Uh, I gotta get him. You know, so I got to get it. He's been ducking and dodging. 
Um, we actually flew to Vegas. We had a little mini little press conference, you know what I'm saying? Set the fight up, you know what I'm saying? Everybody wanted to fight, met his manager, met his trainer, met everybody that wanted to fight me. And then, you know, I go do an exhibition in London and they say, oh man, we don't want to fight him. You don't want to fight him because I did an exhibition? What the fuck has changed? You know what I'm saying? So, so anyway, yeah, dude. Dude live with his father, you know what I'm saying? And his father don't want him to branch out and live and live on his own. So he don't want his son to get hurt. He's not taking no hard fights. He's a pussy. The guy I'm here with, uh, Bogdu, what's, I don't know how to pronounce my guy's name, man. Uh, this was Cash Ali's last opponent. You know his name? No. Well, the reason I'm, the, the point I'm saying is that he told me that uh, Badan, Marones. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's here. He's here with me training. He's actually good. We got some rounds in today. He's saying that Johnny Fisher don't want to fight him either. I said, bro, he's a pussy. He don't want to fight nobody. He want easy fights. He's going to get himself hurt. I said, he don't even want to fight me, and I wasn't even in shape. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, definitely uh, Johnny Fisher, still on the hit list. Uh, Joe Joyce, he's always been on the hit list. Uh, he's actually fighting Cash Ali tomorrow, and I believe George George is the favorite, but I got Cash Ali. You know, I got Cash Ali. Um, you know, I, I hope they have a, a, a good turnout and both of them uh, make it out safe. But for the winner, I got I got Cash Ali. As far as other fighters, man, I mean, those dudes really don't want no real smoke. You know what I'm saying? As far as like uh, Fabio Wardley, he don't really want no smoke. You know, uh Dave Allen, I mean, he's a lot younger than me, but he seems like he's like past his prime. You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, I mean, who else, man? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> who, who else? <laughs> I don't know. I was so talking about joining. I mean, I spend I spend a bit of time down at, at the Tips Boxing Gym. Uh, I've got a good relationship with Mark and, and those guys. So when I put this out, I reckon Johnny Johnny might have something to come back at you with Chris, and maybe we get that fight made. That'd be a great. He fight. need to, you know what I'm saying? He he, he need to, you know. I know Eddie Hearn. They, they all know me. We're supposed to set the fight up, but they backed out. So Very we'd love to see that. I mean, me personally, I think that'd be a good fight. Johnny won the Southern Areas last year and promoted young fighter of the year, I believe. So you've obviously got a, a lot of experience. Johnny's still building up. So I think that'd be a good fight. Good fight. And uh jo how long is he gonna take to build up is the question. Mm. I mean, it's 2024. It's been going on for years. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we waiting on? <laughs> So he's still a lot of hunger somebody, in the tank. Man. Still a lot of hunger in the tank, Chris. At forty years old, still. Listen, I ain't got no damage. I'm ready. I'm always been ready. I got one loss. Hmm. They hoping to get to twenty one and one. You know what I'm saying? They hoping to get there. <laughs> it's gonna listen. It's gonna take them four, five more years to get twenty wins. You know what I'm saying? The way they fighting. It's like, damn. What are we waiting on? We've obviously seen a lot of fights being made in the heavyweight division uh, over in Saudi Arabia. I mean, we could get Fisher, Chris Lovejoy, potentially on one of the undercards coming up, maybe. Who knows? Dude got to grow some balls, man. You know what I'm saying? He got to grow some balls, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. You know, I don't, I don't know what he got going on. Just moving on to, to the wider scope of boxing, Chris. Um, we've got, obviously, Fury Usyk coming up. Two guys in your division. How do you see that one going? It's obviously, it's been postponed. We got it now. I think it's, is it May? Coming up in May. How do you see that one going? Um, I see it going a distance. Um, I see it being a lot more competitive than people may think. And then Fury may think. You see, he's pretty good. He's still a middleweight, you know, in Fury's words, you know. But uh, I get an edge to Fury. I get Fury the edge, you know. And uh, I think he'll convincingly beat him. I think it'd be like a unanimous decision. But I do know that, you know, Usyk is coming to fight. You know what I'm saying? He's proved that he could fight a bigger man. But he's also skipped through the whole heavyweight division to fight Joshua. You know, he didn't have to go through the, he didn't have to go through the ringer. He didn't have to fight and move his way up and work his way up. He fought no heavyweights. He fought one guy. Hasn't fought since, you know what I'm saying? The guy who fought didn't fight in like three or four years, you know what I'm saying? Hasn't fought since. This is a heavyweight fight and then he fought Joshua. So, you know, he never really got to get, get really tested by a real heavyweight. So, Another one know. coming up, Chris, um, which I wanted to get your thoughts on as well. Big fight, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. How do you see that one going? 
I got Devin. Um, I don't see Devin stopping him, but I do see Devin run away, run away with the fight. Unanimous decision. I mean, Devin really like grew into who he is. You know, uh, I fought, I fought on a few cards with him in Mexico. I watched him grow up. Uh, he was like 16, 17 years old fighting. And, uh, you know, just, just going through the process of becoming a man, I was always thinking like, he's not really ready, but it's okay because he's still young. And he really shocked me his last five fights. I mean, every every time he fought, they were saying, this is the one. This is going to be a hard fight for Devin. And he really shocked me and shocked everybody. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he really went over there to beat Cambosis, went back to defend the belts, you know what I'm saying? Beat Linares, you know what I'm saying? Beat Lomachenko. You know, he beat all these guys, you know what I'm saying? He's undefeated, undisputed. And there's nothing to talk about. So, you know, uh, they got to beat him. I don't think nobody can beat him right now. Just finally, before I let you go, Chris, do you have a message to, to any of your fans, anyone tuning in to see you come out in 2024 and make your ring return? Uh, I ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Like I told people two, three years ago, I could take two years off. I could take three years off. They still can't catch my record. <laughs> I'm 21 and one, 20 knockouts. They still can't catch me. Uh, I'm back in the gym. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm working out. And so see y'all soon, man. That's it, man. I'm still a UK assassin, for sure. <laughs> Chris Lovejoy, thank you for speaking to Fred Ropes Boxing. It's been a pleasure. Let's get it, man.